Okay, so before there was Rotten Tomatoes, there were a few movie critics that, like, everyone turned to. And Gene Siskel was one of those guys. He and his co-host, Roger Ebert, literally invented giving movies thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's do a rundown of a couple of Gene's all-timers, as well as the movie he called the ultimate worst piece of bleep ever. It was as depressing an experience as I've ever had going to the movies. Straight Time tells the story of Max, played by the legendary Dustin Hoffman. Max leaves prison and is looking to start on the straight edge path, but surprise, that's harder than it looks. The movie takes a look at the criminal underworld, but in case you think it's going to be a fun romp with shoot 'em ups and quippy one liners, let me stop you right there. This one's realistic, aka sad. Siskel loved this movie mostly because of that realness. Maybe it's something about watching the criminal underworld that appealed to Gene because another one of his top movies was The Godfather. Of course, it's not super surprising considering this one is on most people's top 10 lists. It's an all-time banger about the Corleone crime family and it's the definitive work about the Italian mafia in general. Director Francis Ford Coppola made something that's even more difficult every day, an artistic masterpiece that was also a box office success and Gene loved every minute. Even though Woody Allen has been fully cancelled these days, not getting into that here, you can look it up if you want, people. Back in the day, he made some pretty amazing movies. Annie Hall was his first major hit, and it won a rack of Oscars, including Best Picture. The movie broke a lot of the so-called rules of movie making, like scenes where characters talk to the audience, or when there are suddenly subtitles showing their thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I sort of dabble around, you know. Plus, there's a cute AF scene with some lobsters crawling around. It's a rom-com that is also considered a masterpiece. Just, you know, try not to be like Woody Allen in real life. So it turns out before the internet was around and suddenly there were like a million news sites to click over to, people got their news from printed paper delivered to their door. Seems crazy, right? Say it with me now, newspaper. Cool, we're on the same page now. Anyway, All the President's Men is the true story of how two newspaper journalists, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, broke the story about the Watergate scandal. And before you go, why would a movie about a couple of people writing at a newspaper be thrilling? Let me assure you it is. It's a total masterpiece that Gene adored. Just be sure you're right. It's entertaining, exciting, and has an incredible climax to boot. Nashville follows a bunch of people in the country and gospel music biz in, you guessed it, Nashville, Tennessee. The satirical ensemble comedy takes place over five days before a big concert. It's also the best movie made by director Robert Altman, which is saying something because that dude put out some bangers. He used his classic move of casting a killer lineup of big name actors. This was the 70s, so he wrangled in big stars of that decade like Geraldine Chapin, David Arkin, Jeff Goldblum, Lily Tomlin, Shelley Duvall, and Ned Beatty, and had more main characters than you could ever know what to do with. I counted 24 NBD. It's full of super long takes, stories that intertwine, and more. Gene Siskel adored it, and you will too. Okay, next is the movie Z, and no, I'm not talking about World War Z, which is actually a really fun watch, to be honest. There are no zombies in Z because it's based on the true story of a political assassination of a Greek politician in the 1960s. Okay, so maybe he could have been assassinated by zombies, but he wasn't, so let's just let it go. This movie never really got the mainstream attention that Gene thought it deserved. And frankly, it hasn't necessarily gone down as a classic like some of the other movies we've talked about. But Gene thought it had a ton going for it. He liked the fact that it was both a political thriller and a political statement. While Gene gave a thumbs down to a lot of movies, there was one he hated more than the rest. It was called Frozen Assets, and it was so bad it left Siskel and Ebert feeling depressed and disillusioned with their profession. This is one of the dumbest comedies I have ever seen. You're going very easy on it, I said. <laughs> so far. The film stars Corbin Burnson as a man sent from the head office of a random corporation to manage a small town bank. However, he soon realizes that the bank is a sperm bank. Hilarious! Wait, sorry, I meant to say hilarious? Despite a talented cast, the movie was totes a dud, with no laughs for anyone watching. Siskel and Ebert were particularly unimpressed with the film's opening scene, which featured an executive with underwear stretched over his head. So that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know. <laughs>